My music studio was robbed not only once, but twice. Yeah, I know that is sad and devastating, but everything is good now. See, this happened a few years ago. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you, because oftentimes as a music producer, we don't think about our music equipment in that kind of way being taken from us. We think of our music equipment as our children, as our babies. I know I do. I don't know about you. So I just think about what my music equipment can do for me, like make great music, get on television shows. It makes me happy. It's my release. It's my happy place. But we often don't think about things that can happen like it being stolen. So I'm going to share with you some lessons I learned from my music equipment being stolen. First, let me get into the backstory. I came home one day from work and my neighbor was outside and both of our places got robbed. We live in an apartment from each other. There was about four apartments in this building. Both of our doors was wide open. And she said, her stuff was taken. Then I went inside my place and everything in my studio was gone. I mean, even stuff in the living room, my TV, my Xbox, my games, but my studio, everything was gone. And man, it felt so violating. I don't know if you ever got robbed before, but it felt violating. I mean, I was happy that I wasn't at home. Um, because I may have got injured or who knows what the outcome would have been. But then I went to the front desk and tried to get it resolved. And they said they didn't see anything, which in my mind was odd because my apartment was right by the entrance. There's only one way in and out at the time when I lived at this place and they robbed two places. So the time and effort it takes to get all that stuff, um, when I talked to my friend across the hall, she only had like jewelry and stuff taken. So that stuff is easy. But all my equipment like this stuff is in screwed into the desk. It has plugs. It has cables like that takes a lot of time to take things out. So I was like, wow. So then I file a police report, file insurance, pay my deductible. And then I, I get my stuff back. Not everything, but I get the essentials I need to start to keep making music because this is my business. Right. And that's why I'm telling this story, because if you're making music, you're selling beats. It's a business for you. Even if it's a hobby, you still need to protect your stuff. But anyway, I get my stuff back. Then probably maybe a few weeks to a month later, I get hit again. And, that, and this time I'm furious, right? Because I'm like, I really think somebody was watching me. They saw me get new stuff, bring it into the house, and then rob me again. And then at that point, you know, the conspiracy theories start going. I think the front desk was in on it. Because one of the other neighbors that lived in that complex came out and said, yeah, I've been robbed six times. What? Six times and you still living here? And they hadn't done nothing for security or anything. So that's when I just started thinking, man, the front desk, they they got to be in on it or, or whatever it is. But I left that. I um, got out of my contract. I didn't have to pay anything because I was robbed twice and I, I moved out to a friend's house. But again, the second time I was thankful I wasn't there, I was at work. So no harm was done to me because you can always replace equipment. But the first lesson is a two parter. You want to have insurance for your equipment and don't be quick to file an insurance claim. Now, let me break it down. I'm not saying don't file an insurance claim if something gets stolen, but it depends on the amount. See, I didn't know this, but the woman told me after I filed, I shouldn't even file the claim because what happened, they actually dropped me from my insurance. And in hindsight, it makes sense, right? When I filed that second time, they probably thought I was committing fraud or something, but I just really got robbed twice. Like I wasn't trying to get over on anybody. I got robbed twice and they dropped me from my insurance. So at that point I was scared because to go any other place, I had to have renter's insurance. And luckily I got picked up by another insurer. But the woman told me, well, this was a small amount that got taken. You should have just saved up 
and just paid it off and not filed the claim. So it makes sense. But if you do it, weigh your pros and cons of if you if it's like twenty thousand dollars worth of equipment filing my stuff at that time i didn't have that much equipment so it really wasn't that much money but i just filed an insurance claim because i had it and now i know and that's why i'm telling you and the crazy thing is even though they took all my things they didn't take the most valuable thing in my studio and that was my hard drive. And that brings me to lesson number two. Have a backup to the backup to the backup. See, when I came in my room and saw all my stuff gone, but I saw my hard drive, I was like. Because at the time I had no backups, right? I had no cloud services or nothing. And this is how I make a little side income, right? All my music for sync license and my beats are on this hard drive. So let's say some um, TV show wants to use my music, but I need to edit it. I need to chop it up and do something else with the stems, take out instruments, but I don't have my hard drive. I don't have my master files. Now what? Now I lost out on the opportunity. So I'm telling you now, you might not think about having a backup to your backup to your backup. But after that day, I put in a new system. I went out and I got another hard drive and cloned the exact same hard drive that I used to make music. I also started looking at cloud services. So I use a service called Backblaze and I like their service because you can upload things to the cloud and if you need a backup of it, all you need to do is get another hard drive and download all your files. And then the plan that I have, they save about 30 days of backups so that's a very good service to have, man. So think about that when you're thinking about your music, like, oh, man, I need I need to have this stuff a physical and in the cloud. That's how I do it. I have a physical backup and I have one in the cloud and I also bought me a safe. Yes. So the safe is there so I can put the backup hard drive in the safe. Now, they may take the safe. They could because I just had a small little safe of my documents and music things in there, but they might not go through the hassle of taking it. It's just one way to protect your gear. That's why I advise to really have your stuff in the cloud. So if your hard drive crashes or fails, which leads me to my number three lesson of how to protect your gear, get you an APS. Yes, a APS. Now, basically what this is, is just a backup power supply. There was one time where my hard drive had got damaged and got corrupted. Luckily, I had my stuff in the cloud. So all I had to do was buy another hard drive and download the things. But a power outage can ruin your equipment, right? If you have your speakers on and you forget to turn them off first and the power just shuts off, they can blow your speakers, man. You don't want to damage all your equipment you have. So getting the backup power supply is something very vital, but underutilized in a music studio. So this way, if a power goes out, what happens is in a milli split a second, the battery kicks in and your whole system is able to stay on. It's just a it's just a small backup system. It's just like they have in hospitals and stuff. So. It, don't, it doesn't stay on forever, but it's meant to give you enough time to save your files, to shut down everything because you don't know how long your power is going to be out and the batteries, it's not going to last forever. So you have time to shut it down. That way you can save your equipment. I've been in a lot of scenarios where my power cut off and that backup battery system really saved my gear and it saved my peace of mind. I would say go for about the mid range in price. Don't go for the ultra cheap. You don't have to do the ultra expensive one. Now, if you have a big main studio, yes, you want to have a big power supply and a nice one. But if you're just doing a small home studio, even if you just have a laptop, right? I know the laptop has its own battery power, but you want to protect your stuff because anything can happen. That surge protector doesn't work correctly. The power hits, right? 
So, and you're probably going to have an external hard drive anyway with your music. If not, you should have one for your sounds and you need to protect that because you definitely don't want that to fry and lose all your hard work. Oh, and one last thing I forgot to mention. I also eventually got me a security system. Now, they have more advanced options now where you can get cameras and look on your phone monitoring. But I got me a security system because I was like, man, this is too much. I can't deal with this. So I eventually paid for a security system. You don't have to go that far to protect your gear, but it's definitely something you should think about. I know as beat makers and producers, all we want to do is be creative, man. But you can't be creative if you ain't got nothing to be creative with, right? If you lose your things, this is your business. Even if it's a hobby, it's still something that you probably hold dear to your heart. I know I hold this gear to dear to my heart, even though it's just physical things and they can always be replaced. They can't take away my ideas I have in here. And speaking of ideas, if you want to get into sync licensing and you need a, some motivation to help you out, check out one of these videos.